Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In the previous video, we have already talked a look at the OpenWRT1. As some of you commented, it will be raised if the OpenWRT1 had two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. So in this video, I'm going to test this out using the PCIe to 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapter with the Intel i225V chip. We will also need the M.2 key M to PCIe X4 adapter, like what I'm showing on the screen. This module is very popular on AliExpress and all the marketplace, and you can take a look. Well, I will skip the disassembly process of the OpenWRT1 because it's very simple and straightforward. Now, I will connect the Intel i225V network adapter to the M.2 key M to PCIe adapter, and then insert it to the M.2 slots on the OpenWRT1. Since the OpenWRT1 has a USB-C console port, I will connect that to the computer as well. Let's move to the PC and we will proceed there. Alright, so right now my PC is connected to the OpenWRT1 but it is not powered on. So let me go to the device manager and check out what port it is. We can see that the port is COM5. So let's open the Pulti's application right here. Select COM5. The speed is will be 115 to 100. And hit enter. Alright, so now I'm going to connect the power cable and then we're going to turn on the OpenWRT1. So I will put the console as one size and the image of the booting process as one size so that you can see what is going on. We can also see that the LDD indicate 3.3 volt on the M.2 PCIe to PCIe adapters will also turn on. However, there were no connection because I didn't connect the Ethernet port. So let's wait for it. We can see that the device have completed the booting process and this was OpenWRT 24RC5. So Let's run a quick DMAX command and check out if we have any result from PCIe. So we can see that there are devices connected to the PCIe port, but I'm not sure if it is the 2.5 GB Ethernet adapter or not. So let's run LS PCI. I'm not sure if it was installed, so we need to install the PCI utility. Now let's run OPK3 update. I'm not sure why for OpenWRT24 RC5 it is still using OPK3 instead of APK. Alright, so let's install the PCI utilities. We have installed the PCI utilities and let's run LS PCI to check it out. So right here we can see the Ethernet controllers Intel i225V. So let's go further by at the ending V and C. So as you can see that there were no kernel rival in use for this i225V, which means we need to install the rival for it. So in order to do that, let's run OPKG update and then OPKG install KMOD IGC. So IGC is the rival package for the i225V. And if you're using OpenWRT snapshot, you will be running APK at KMOD IGC. So very good, we have installed the driver for IGC, as you can see right here. And then here is some debugs for gigabit per second available PCIe bandwidth. So let's run LSPCI-V again, and this time we can see the kernel drivers in use in IGC. So now if we run IP link, we should be able to see another interface very well, Ethernet 2. How about IF config? 
Is it present? No, because we haven't added the interface to the LAN bridge. So let's go to 192.168.1.1, log into Lucy. So let's log into Lucy's and then go to network interfaces and go to devices tab. Right here we have Ethernet 0, Ethernet 1, which is the internal interface of the OpenWRT1, and our newly added PCIe 2.5 gigabit Ethernet card. Let's click on the configure button and then add the Ethernet 2 which is the PCIe to 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapter and hit save and apply. And now the 2.5 gigabit to PCIe adapters has been added to the LAN bridge. I'm going to disconnect my computer from the 1 gigabit LAN port just right here and connect it to this PCIe adapters. Let's do it. Now I'm going to remove my computer from the 1 gigabit internet plan port and connect it to the PCIe to 2.5 gigabit adapter just right here. So let's do that together. Very good, we can see that the LEDs on the PCIe to 2.5 gigabit adapters are lining up and it indicates a working connection. So let's check it out. All right, so I will do some very quick, simple tests. Okay, so right here on the log, we can see that IGC it's Ethernet 2 next link is up in 2.5 gigabit per second. Full duplex and flow control are XTX. So now we will be doing a very quick IPUB3 LAN to LAN test to see if the 2.5 gigabit adapters really works. So let's run IPUB3 S. So on my computers, I will go to the IPUB3 directories and then it will be P4. So let's go. And very good, we are having 2.37 gigabit per second and we can see that the device is doing very well. So let's run in the reverse mode and let's see what is the download speed. Very good, it is 2.37 gigabit per second as well. Alright, so we can see that 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapter works on the OpenWRT1 and now I will do a detailed one to run to put test with open speed test IPUB3 and I will show you the CPU consumption and thing like that. It is time for the one to run test. Again, this is OpenWRT 24RC5 running on the OpenWRT1. On the screen, you have top, edge top, the power meters and the speed test windows. As usual, we will be using open speed test and IPUB3. The first test will be done with packet steering on with 128 flows and no off flooding. With open speed test, the download speed reaches 1335 Mbps while the CPU usage hit around 75%. The upload speed is a bit slower, just 967 Mbps with 65% CPU load. However, the result is different when testing with IPUB3, with 4 streams running in normal mode or upload, the throughput is 1.25 gigabit per second, the CPU uses is reaching up to 82%. We got the same throughput in reverse or download. The test ends with 1.27 gigabit per second. Now I will enable shortwave offloading and continue with the test. The download speed is now 1339 Mbps and the CPU utilization is only 55%. We can see that shortwave offloading doesn't provide more throughput but it reduces the CPU load. The upload speed on open speed test is getting better. It is 1229 Mbps compared to 967 Mbps when offloading it off. 
Running the test in iPub 3, I got more or less the same speed, which is 1.25 to 1.28 gigabit per second. I'm not sure if hardware offloading is working on the OpenWRT one, but let's give it a try. Alright, the throughput and the CPU lot is the same with software offloading, so I assume that hardware offloading is not implemented on the OpenWRT one. Something I noticed is that the CPU lot is always on one core of the TPU, while the other core has very little lot. If you go back to the test without offloading, the lot is somehow shared between two cores. Before ending the videos, I will do a LAN to LAN test with the iPub 3 server running on the OpenWRT1 itself. As you can see, we are reaching 2.36 gigabit per second with 95 CPU lot. The software IRQ is also very high, it is up to 52%. So we can conclude that the maximum 1 to LAN throughput the OpenWRT1 can handle a 1.3 gigabit per second with 7.2 watt of power. That should be why it only has a gigabit LAN port. Beside the Intel i225V, I also test out the Intel Quad port i340T4 gigabit Ethernet adapter. This card is powered by the Intel's A25A0 Gigabit controller and it works fine after I install the Kmod IGP kernel package. As you can see from the network devices, we have 4 new interfaces show up. After adding it to the LAN bridge, it will work in RAID. I have also given a try with the 2.5 Gigabit adapter which is using the Realtex RTL a125BG chip. Unfortunately, it doesn't work as expected. On the console, I received non stop error messages related to the PCIe devices. PCIe bus error, severities, corrected, type physical layer, receiver ID. I have also tested with the 12 volt power supply added to the module, but it doesn't work. If you have any idea how to fix this, Please let me know in the comment section. Alright, that will be all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.